Hi guys, very welcome to Mentor, yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're all doing fantastic out there. So, very welcome to my son's room. Uh, this is not the new Mentor studio. Uh, it's just the only place in my house that I was able to sneak away to do this short podcast for you guys. This is going to be the second video in my uh, series about different um, pilot licenses. In my first video, I talked about private pilot license what you could do with a private pilot license, what you can't do with a private pilot license, and what you can expect while you're training towards it too. Check that out if you haven't already. Um, I know guys that today I promised that I was going to do a podcast about both commercial pilot license and multi-pilot license, MPL. But to be perfectly honest, I have been researching MPL for the last couple of days. There's a lot of documentation to go through because I'm not really familiar with MPL since I haven't done it myself. And what I've come up with is that MPL is something that deserves an entire video podcast for itself. So what I'm going to do is today I'm going to be covering commercial pilot license and in my next video podcast I'll be talking to you guys about MPL, what it is, what it was intended to be, whether or not it has succeeded with what the targets were when they developed it and so on. So those of you who are wondering about MPL, stay tuned and I will tell you more about MPL in my next video. So, just to recap a little bit, uh, we talked about private pilot license last time. Uh, private pilot license is a license that enables you to take your friends out for trips around your hometown. It also enables you to fly cross-country if you want. Generally, you fly small aircraft with a private pilot license, but you can also get an instrument rating, you can get a multi-engine rating, and you can get a night rating. So with a private pilot license, you'll be able to get yourself around, maybe in your own aircraft, or maybe in the aircraft of the flying club that you're a member of, but you won't be able to charge money for your flying. Now, the next step up in the license hierarchy from PPL is what's called a CPL, which is a commercial pilot license. Okay. A commercial pilot license requires you to have a higher level of um, handling skills and a higher level of theoretical skills. Um, what the way that then that the training tends to go is you might do your training in a modular way, which is where you start with one type of license and then you go on and you continue with the next license. So you would start with a PPL, then you continue with your CPL and your multi-engine training. That's the modular way. There's also something called an integrated way, which most pilots that want to do their training quickly, they go through an integrated course in which you will do also PPL and CPL, but the whole training will kind of be, as it sounds, integrated. So it will be one long course. Okay. Now, when you are training for your CPL, so you have attained your PPL and now you're training to, uh, to become more proficient to get your CPL, you also have to study more theoretical subjects, okay? So the way that uh, a commercial pilot license is constructed, the way the training for commercial pilot license is constructed is governed by ICAO. And uh, the thing is that ICAO has then left it up to the individual member states of the world to decide how they are going to implement their rules which means that the commercial pilot training is just slightly different in different countries, which is why I'm not going to go into a great detail of what the course contains, because it does differ. However, if you are going to do your theoretical training, you can expect to write either 13 or 14 exams, theoretical exams. If you are going to do your ATPL frozen theory as part of your CPL training, there's going to be 14 exams. Okay? Now, what is ATPL frozen? Okay, um, so to explain it shortly, the level of theoretical knowledge you need to have in order to attain a CPL is here. Okay. The level you need to attain an ATPL is here, but it's in the exact same amount of um, theoretical subjects. Okay, so you can study and write the exams only for a CPL and you only need to attain this level then, but that doesn't make much sense because if you are going for this as a career, um, you will eventually want to attain what's called an air transport pilot license, an ATPL. 
And in that case, if you have only written the exams for your CPL, you will have to study again and write new exams for your ATPL license. Okay. Instead of doing that, you can write the exams for the ATPL knowledge level immediately when you're doing your CPL. Uh, that will give you both the uh, CPL level of knowledge so that you can get your CPL certificate, but it also will give you what's called the frozen ATPL license. So that means that when you have attained your CPL and you've been working for a couple of years and you have attained the number of hours needed in order to do your ATPL, you have already done all the theoretical training that's needed. So you only need to do a skill test and then you can pick up your ATPL license. So whenever you hear the term CPL with a frozen ATPL theory package, that's what they mean. You will have to read a little bit more you will have to write slightly more complex tests, but you will also have done all the theoretical training that you will ever need in this job to attain licenses anyway. All right, so the practical training is more complicated than the PPL training. Uh, why is that? Well, it, it kind of goes, you know, logically, if you think about it, in order for you to charge money from people to fly, they would expect you to have a slightly higher uh, proficiency level, which is why you need to be able to do certain things a little bit better when you fly uh, commercially than when you fly privately. So that's why there's more training. There's also more cross-country flying as part of your CPL training. You will, for example, need to do, I think it's a 300 nautical mile cross-country flight with a minimum of two full stop landings in airfields that are not your home airfield. That, that's just one of the extra requirements. Um, and also, once you have written your exams, and you've done all that, at the end there will be a skill test and an oral exam. So the examiner that does your skill test is going to ask you questions to check your knowledge, to make sure that you actually have the knowledge and level needed to fly commercially. So what do I mean by flying commercially? Well, uh, with a CPL in Europe, you'll be able to start working for an airline. Fresh out of school, 200 hours in your logbook, you'll be able to start working for an airline, providing that the airline uh, actually accepts applications for people with 200 hours. It's up to the airlines to decide that. Okay. In America, it's different. In America, since a couple of years back, you need to have an ATPL, an Air Transport Pilot License, which I'll talk about in a later podcast, in order to fly for an airline. And in order to get an ATPL, you also need to have about 1,500 hours of flight. There are also something called a restricted ATPL, which they have in the States, uh, which I'll talk about in the, uh, the podcast with the ATPL. Okay? But this means that in, in Europe, you'll be able to start working for an airline, you know, theoretically. Uh, but in the States, you need to attain that, those hours before you can start working for an airline. But there are other things that you can do, um, which also falls under the kind of commercial grade flying, which is, for example, you can work for a company that provides sightseeing tours, or you can work, which is the absolutely most common way of building hours, you can work for a flight school as a CFI, as a flight instructor. So that maybe even the flight school that you took your licenses is in, in, if you did it in a good way and you presented yourself in a good way, they might employ you afterwards, after you've done some additional training, I should say, as a flight instructor and then you'll be training other pilots and while you're doing that you'll be gaining those precious hours to move you closer to that um, airline job. Okay? There's also things like you can tow gliders, you can uh, work for a parachuting club flying parachuters, you can do air surveillance. Um, there are many many ways which are not airline related but that that are available for you guys to, to attain those hours. This is one of the most common questions that I get on the channel. How do I achieve those hours in order for the airlines to look for me? And, and there are ways of doing it, guys, um, but they're not easy based. This has always been the hardest part of uh, getting into this industry. The hardest part, is, well, the two hardest part of this industry is one is to, to, uh, to get money to finance your licenses. And the second one, is to get the hours needed in order for you to be um, attractive on the job market. But as, as you know, there's no golden kind of key to this. 
you are all going to have to find your individual way of doing this. Okay? But that is essentially what you're allowed to do with a commercial pilot license. You are able to charge for your services. So as a private pilot, you can only you can fly around, but you can never charge any money for anyone. As a commercial pilot, a, a company can come in and employ you and pay you a salary for your flying duties. And that's the main difference. And you need a commercial pilot license to do that. You can never do that with a PPL. Okay. So the next um, podcast, I'm going to talk about um, multi-pilot license, like I promised you before. And then I'm going to follow up with ATPL and I'm also going to include jet orientation courses and MCC courses. I hope you guys have liked this so far. Uh, as always, share this video with uh, your friends on Facebook, on Twitter, and uh, put your comments and questions below on the comment section, because that's how I know what you want me to cover in my next podcast, okay? Uh, it's, as always, it's fantastic to see you guys here on the channel, and uh, I'm hoping to see you next time. For now, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.